Show off your robot to thousands on the front page of Twitch. Submit your robot reveal video to Fun Premiere Night by going to tinyurl.com forward slash fun2019 info to learn more. And we're going to move on to some of the questions that we got submitted um, mostly through our Discord channel. Um, in the future, for future episodes, uh, we'll generally post a thread about the next episode a day or two beforehand on uh, Cheap Delphi. Uh, we'll post about it on Discord, uh, some of the social media. So if you have a question that you want to get in the show, um, you can always post it in the chat during the show, which you can do right now, or you can also submit it ahead of time in one of those avenues. So uh, first one of our questions we got ahead of time is coming to us from longtime fun supporter Caltran. Uh, and he asks, does expected level of play factor into robot design? Uh, do they? Do you guys plan for a world's meta, or do you plan for winning a regional and then adapt from there? Well, regional, obviously, you're in districts, but uh, I think you guys get the idea. And then alternatively, where does 195 stand on the ethics of defense? So however you guys want to feel that question. <laughs> it sure is. Um, I would say when... When we're trying to uh, design the robot or come up with what design we want to um, make and what kind of robot we want to um, end up with, we, we always look at how, how do we play this game on Einstein? And that's, that's what the number one um, you know, data points are, or the number one goal of 195 is going to be. How are we going to play this game on, on Einstein? But we don't necessarily go to our first competition with all that working. We, we look at the competitions and say, okay, what do we want to get done for our first competition? What do we want to get done for our second competition? Cause, cause it's, it's hard to, to get everything done for the first time. And, uh, we kind of like build on the robot as we go along. Um, the, the ethics of defense is that <laughs> Matt, does it, do you want it? Does anybody want to answer that one? I can go in if you want me to. Okay. Uh, defense, last year, I think specifically the last year, just because with the game the way it was going, we didn't feel defense was heavily necessary. Uh, but I, th I think we'd all agree that defense is always an important aspect of gameplay, uh, depending on what the game is. And it's just a matter of, you know, Gino was talking strategy before, whatever ends up working best for that competition, if we can incorporate both angles of offense and defense, that's always a good move. Uh, and also, just considering uh, how we're going to incorporate that into our robot is always an important factor. So being able to kind of double up on things and have that dual prong approach, that's always beneficial. Sure. All right, moving on to our next question. This comes to us from Tim from 1257. Uh, what mistake or failure do you feel best helped 195 grow competitively? Great question. Who wants to take that one? So I think something that helps us a lot is specifically like last season when we made a mistake in the beginning of the season when designing our elevator. So sort of like the, dis the mistakes that we make in the beginning of the season with design and then as the season goes on, we figure out those mistakes and we're able to make our robot better and more able to compete at like world's level. Well, one thing I, I want to throw uh, in. Oh. Oh. After you, Gino. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. You go first and I'll chime in. All right. Yeah. Sorry, my uh, sound just cut out for a second, but all right. Uh, just building on top of what Kate was just saying, uh, you know, we talked about before how those first two weeks are very important when it comes to planning out strategy and everything, or not strategy, but just prototyping. So considering how much time we already spend on design in the first place, uh, trying to eliminate all of those uh, possible mistakes or possible errors that might occur, uh, it definitely helps. But then, like Kate was saying, accounting for them over the course of the season, you, you can't have one without the other, and you got to still work through issues. It's not going to be one and done and get everything fixed right away. Sure. One thing I got to say, add to that is, if you look at our history, there there were you know, there was times when we used to say we used to always come out a little weak in our first competition, and then we we'd come out just shooting with all barrels. You know, the the next one. Um, but you know, you look at it. We don't call it. I don't want to necessarily call it a mistake versus a learning opportunity, right? I mean, the thing is not to throw in the towel and walk away, put your head down and walk away. 
it's now you sit down and, and you get back to the drawing board and you you're you're gonna learn the best way to learn is make mistakes correct you're you're gonna know what to do better second time around so it's all about failing faster right yeah. Um, all right. Next question comes to us from Jeff from 1296. Uh, he would like to know, is there a lot of added pressure to perform well, knowing that 195 is a well-known team and people may be watching your performance? So I don't know if, uh, who wants to take this one, student or mentor, maybe both. I'll take Mitch. this one. Okay. So I know at least like when we're at competitions, we know because people know who we are, that when you're around other teams, just make sure like we smile at people because there's been times where we've gotten a bad reputation before that I know of. So it's, we try and be helpful and like keep a good face because we are good people and it's trying to show that to other people because there is always an eye on us. Sure. That's pretty straightforward. Um, we'll move on to this kind of is related to scouting. You guys, you obviously touched on scouting quite a bit. Uh, I think it's Lena from 488. Um, they said, how does 195 scout? You kind of covered that, uh, but maybe more specifically, what metrics is 195 tracking this season for destination deep space? Well, uh, there are none of the three of us here from scouting. Yet, um, so I can't really <laughs> answer that question. All right. I that's fair. Leave them on, I kind of leave them on their own to, to they they really start uh, study this thoroughly, mm -hmm. and then I go in with the drive team toward the end of build season, and we start sitting down and listen to what they have to say, and then we start throwing in what we think is also good to have as a, a strategy team and a drive team. Um, the the metrics this year, I mean, if I had to pick any off the top of my head, is you know what what are you doing in autonomous? Uh, the you know, can you get two hatches up? Can you get two you know a ball and a hatch? Mm -hmm. um, the uh, and are you going? Can you fill a rocket ship? Can you not fill a rocket ship? Um, things like that. So I, I'm you know sure. things that I'm just thinking about. It, it's cycle time too. Cycle time is a big one this year. All right. Um, next question would be Griffin from sixty three thirty four. Uh, do people on 195 believe that the regional system is better or the district system? <laughs> well, since uh, I've been around with both, I guess I'll, I'll answer that question. Sure. Uh, I, when when uh, we first switched to district, uh, it was kind of, I didn't like it at first, just because, uh, you know, regionals, you get to see a lot of other teams um, that you normally, you know, teams from out of state can come play with you or, or from out of the, you know, the country mm. with the district system. It's that's kind of tied in, you know, that it's there, there is some interdistrict play, but it's very, very minimal. That's so that part is the negative part. The positive part, it's great being able to play in two competitions where I can pretty much drive within you know, five minutes to an hour of our facility. Um, no. And there, that's a, what I call a benefit. I think it allows you to uh, really get two decent options in and, and hone down into the uh, the championship as well, the district championship, by the time you get the world championship. All right. Fair enough. And I think our last uh, pre-submitted question we're going to do for now is from, I think it's Ashan from FTC team, uh, 9794. Uh, he would like to know, how does 195 do driver practice? Do you want me to go in with that, Gino? Go ahead. And uh, yeah, and try out, like, if you guys, and how you pick your driver, maybe, too. So, initially starting off, when you're trying to pick who you want to start off for driving candidates, they actually go through and will have people submit their actual applications. I was one last year who submitted an application. And after they see what your application entails, you know, past experience that you might have had, if it was like FLL or just any sort of even video game experience, that's a couple of my friends put that down just for driver control. And once you get past that, they'll take you into the facility and they'll show you past robots and have you practice a little bit with it before, you know, just going around a few of the obstacles on the field with a few of the old drive bases. And then once you get past that level, it's level by level and they see... Um, who can continue, whether 
who maybe it's who can possibly be the best fit person to do so. So once we get past that initial level, it goes on to last year's robot being used. So they would practice with the Dark Knight from last year. And it tests both the arm aspect as well as just the drive based aspect. So as you know, with the two drivers, that makes it easier to see who's fit for best, who's best fit to do both, uh, but also seeing uh, which one is better for either person because someone who's not good with the drive base could be incredible with the arm. So once you get past that level, you see some more initial testing. And then finally you get to uh, competition level for off the district events when it's off season. So you actually get the chance to drive at those events to test out your skills and see how you do under the pressure of competition. Uh, and then, you know, it's up in the air for now. I don't know if they've, they haven't told us at least who they've chose for drivers this year since Chris and Jake left, uh, left last year, which was a very sad moment. But, you know, it's in the cards for Gino. I don't know when he's going to reveal it. Show us his hand. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I got to ask you here. Um, you know, you mentioned that uh, students have listed uh, playing video games as a attribute. Now, uh, if in your opinion, if they listed that they play Fortnite, are they qualified to be the driver or the team mascot? <laughs> uh, you know, we got a pretty solid team mascot. I would never want to take that uh, away from Tyler Bate, great guy. I would never want to take away his position right now. You saw him before in the scouting video, rocking yep. that suit yep. of armor. And uh, but, but you can definitely see if they put that down, go for it. Go to see if you want to be the mascot. See if you can carry on the legacy. Be the one to pull the sword out of the stone next. It'd be great. And another another requirement of the drive team is they got to be able to do that uh, that legendary 195 uh, intro oh. dance, right? If you you got to know that. Um, if that's not the first thing you pick up, then they'll drop you right there. Can we get a demonstration from the students, please? <laughs> oh, yeah, Matt, all you right. want to be a driver, right? You, you Matt and Kate, let's see it. Up. Yeah, all right. Let's see if we could time this out. It might be very off considering the fact that we're both reversed and have the delay of the camera. But uh, ready, Kate? Yep. All right. And oh, that's that awesome. wasn't yeah. too bad. That was <laughs> very bad. It started off good. It got a little off as he went forward. Yeah. Well, one thing I got to say, you know, about drive team, it's one of the most, I would say, one of the most stressful things to decide on the team every single year. Um, you know, because you, you know, you only have any, depending on the year, between, you know, three and four students on the field. And, um, you know, sometimes you have one drive team member leaving, sometimes you have two or three. And, but the, the main thing is that the, the team understands that, you know, our main purpose is to make sure we have the best qualified person on that field. And there's, it doesn't mean that that, that people that didn't make it are, are not qualified to do anything else. There's a lot to do on our team. And, you know, everybody has a, a niche somewhere that they fit really well with. So, yeah. Someday I'll decide, I guess I got to decide before Utica. <laughs> that might be necessary, Gino. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.